Hi everybody, Dan Ullman, Mike Beer, the DRF Bets race of the day for Saturday, June the 2nd. Race number nine at Penn National. It's the grade two $500,000 Penn Mile for three-year-olds, and you can play it with your very new DRF Bets account. It's easy, just go to drf.com forward slash bet and join the Belmont Stakes action in a week or so with three cash. Here's the field for the Penn Mile. Some nice three-year-olds getting set to go eight furlongs. Download your free formulator past performances for the Penn Mile on the Race of the Day event page at drf.com. We'll take this field in post position order. Please follow along. The one's Colton, Mississippi. You know I'm a big fan of Colton, Mississippi. I think this is way too tough a spot. Yeah, I mean, you like him a lot more than I do. Um, I, it's, a, it's hard for me to believe that he's actually running in this race. They debuted him on turf last time going six furlongs. He's got a little bit of turf pedigree. He didn't run. Uh, terrible in that race, but he's going to have to run a lot better than that against this field. Is he here to push the pace for his uncoupled yeah, stable mate Maraud, who's most likely a one-run closer and needs a little pace help? Yeah. Colton Mississippi ran well in his turf debut in the Bridgetown, okay. I thought. Okay. I mean, that race has produced two next out dirt winners with buyers yeah. of 80 and 92. Inside post, Joel Rosario can make his trip from there. I just don't think he's good enough, and I'm a fan of the horse. Let's move on yeah. to the two encumbered. You're a fan of encumbered, because yeah, like this was really rolled in the Del Mar Juvenile Turf last fall. He beat a nice one in my boy, Jack. He tried the front runner on the dirt. I guess you do that when you got a promising yeah. two-year-old, and that was a disaster. And the Breeders' Cup Juvenile Turf, listen, a live race that just didn't work out from a trip standpoint. Yeah, I mean, he his two turf races, the first two turf races of his career, I thought they were both good. He beat my boy Jack both times, and I just liked the way he did it. He almost looked to me like a horse in both of those races where he was only doing just enough to win those races. He wasn't really laying it down in the stretch, but he was always holding on in those races. You know, his Breeders' Cup, I don't really know what to say about it. He looked a little headstrong early in that race. Like, Mario Gutierrez couldn't get him to settle. He wound up up there three wide with the pace until the top of the stretch, and it was over for him from there. Um, the margin of defeat in that race, it's a little exaggerated. Gutierrez just gave up on him at the top of the stretch. He knew he was a beaten horse. He's better than that. This is a really tough spot off the layup, but on the other hand, we're shipping him all the way over. I was going to say, he's a good horse. This is a very confident placement by a very sharp horseman in Simon yeah. Callahan. I have a feeling this horse is going to fire right off the blocks, off the layoff. He's just going to need a little bit of pace, and I think he's going to get it. We know yeah. Maraud needs pace. Not only did he get it last time he out did. in the American turf, but he got that yielding course that I just think he liked. Got a career best 91 buyer. Hard to knock a horse that's won three yeah. out of his last four starts for the Pletcher Matt. Barn. But at a short price, I think there are enough holes where you might want to take a shot against. It's going to be interesting to see how they bet the race. And listen, I don't really have any argument with him being the favorite on the morning line. It'll just be interesting to see if he actually goes off favorite in here. Um, but but he, he's a very logical horse in this race. He's basically run well in every one of his starts um, in his career. That goes all the way back to his debut at Saratoga last summer. I thought he was good in the American turf. I also feel like a lot of things went his way in that race. There was pace in that race. I love that Johnny V just sort of kept him on the outside the entire way. I think that's where he wanted to be on that turf course. And he just came running at the end in a race that really fell apart, and he got up at the end. It was a good effort for him. But you know what? This might even be a tougher spot than that one. New York Red Therapist, another horse that likes to win races, four of five. And the only time he lost, yes, he lost to Maraud, but it was his first start off the layup, and he threw a fit in the gate yeah, before the start. Nice. Last time out in the Cutler Bay, he looked like he was in big trouble on the turn. Irad had to really start scrubbing at him, and then he had a sustained run. And I wonder if he won that race on class alone. Speed yeah. Franco and Salamanza are not as good as the horse as he's going to be facing on Saturday. So this is a big step up in class, but again, can't knock a horse that wins a lot. He got a fig last time, if you believe it. Yeah, he's got the figures for it. He's improved in every one of his starts for Kristoff Come on, so we'll see if he can improve again in the Penn Mile. This is obviously going to be the toughest test of his career, but he's made no mistakes so far. I do think he's a good horse. Um, to me, it would really all come down to price. He's 3-1 to one on the line. To me, that is not a good price on him, but we'll see if that's what he actually goes off at. And while he's been a win machine, he hasn't exactly had that wow factor when he's won. That's true he's of grinded it out, and there's nothing wrong with it. A win's a win. It looks great in the box score. The five's way early, also a New York bred, and while way early is slow on figs, he's getting Lasix for the first time for a yeah. very good trainer in George Weaver, and I thought he ran well in his first start of the year off a really long layoff. There are worse 10 to 1 shots yeah. in the world than way early. I agree with that. He's a horse that I want to use somewhere. I don't know if he's good enough in a field like this, but he he is pretty good. I think he has even more potential. I'm with you. I thought he ran fine, considering it was his first off the layoff last time. Morris had just got absolutely loose on the lead in there. This horse was chased him home pretty gamely, and you're, as you put it, he gets Lasix this time. I would go back to his um, AWOD stakes last year, the second only second starter of his career after an impressive maiden win. 
I don't think it's that difficult to make an argument that he, he could have won that race. Um, Joel Rosario, and it wasn't Joel's fault. He just got him sort of trapped on the rail, and it never opened up for this horse. He couldn't even ride this horse to the finish, but he was still hanging in there, making up ground. Um, this horse is pretty good. After we watched the Palm Beach back on March the 3rd, even though Hawkish finished behind Maraud and Therapist, we said Hawkish was the one we wanted yeah. out of the race. There was no pace whatsoever. Hawkish, who was just this big sea monster type horse, was near the back of the pack. He made a big, giant, sustained, yeah. wide move to get into contention just as the speed started sprinting for home. He ran much better than it looks on paper. And it was nice to see not only Hawkish get the win in fast time last time, out, yeah. But he made his own trip. He showed a lot That's more true. tactical speed. It was a beautiful trip, but he showed a lot more speed. Yeah, really good trip. Um, that is certainly true. And obviously Morrison is the horse that came back and wired way early in his next start. So that horse is okay. Um, and you're right, he got a good trip in that race. But when you go back and watch the replay, trip didn't have anything to do with it. He was just, just way the best in that horse. And I love the way he finished that race off. It was a big step forward for this horse again. And you're right, he showed a little more tactical speed. All those things sort of work in his favor. I don't know if you're getting the five to one on him that the morning line has, but he could do, and I, I'd probably take it. Penn Miles produced some nice horses yeah. over the year. Would you argue that Hawkish is the horse with the most sort of star potential? In this field, I kind of, yeah, actually, I kind of do think that he like is. Like the Belmont and, Derby kind of horse. Yeah, I think he is, yeah, 100%. You know, um, his trainer, Jimmy Toner, obviously does a good job. He had him entered in the Pennine Ridge, too. He was looking at both spots. They're going to run in this one for the 500000 but I think you're right. That's going to be the next stop for this horse if he does well on Saturday. Smart Remark's going to go dirt to turf. Throw it as Pat Day Mile. It was over a really wet wet, wet racetrack at Churchill Downs. Oh, yeah. His prior turf start was three back. It was off the long layoff. He got wired by a nice source in Gadoo. Good. That son of Frankel came back to win with an 88 buyer in the Paradise Creek Stakes. Our time form U.S. pace projector believes that Smart Remark is going to get the lead, but he's going to have to go hmm. fast to do it. I think he's bankable, actually gets the lead over Smart Remark, but Smart Remark could be close. Yeah, I agree with that. I, I think he can because I think he'll get a good trip in this race, and it's not like his two turf races don't point him out as contender in him. I think he is a contender in here at a fair price. As for he's bankable who completes the field, trainer Mark Cassie has this one. He's won his last two races on the turf. Uh, he was able to get out to a nice lead last time out in the English Channel Stakes. And when you look at that field, Boy, that was just a weak bunch that he bullied, and he's not going to be able to bully those, especially with this sort of pace scenario. Yeah, I just I agree with that. I mean, he looks fine on paper to yeah. me. I don't I don't like his races as much when you start really taking them apart. But on paper, he's fine. He's got some speed, um, and he could still improve again. I just like other horses in this Let's race. Let's take a look at our top selections for our DRF bet Saturday race of the day. Listen, you're a big fan of Hawkish. We think he's got all the upside in the world. Five to one on the morning line. You'd lock in now. Yeah, we'll see if we get it. I don't know how they're going to bet this race. I suspect he's going to take a little bit of money. He was really impressive last time. I don't think it's any big secret that this horse has some uh, some ability and some potential. I like him in this You're going to go six, five, two, and three. Therapist likes to win races, and he's another horse I think that can make his own trip. He's got enough tactical speed to sort of ease in the second yeah. flight or so and get the jump on the true closers like Maraud. I'm going to hope he's got one more in him, but he is stepping up in class. Four, six, three, and eight for me in the grade two Penn Mile, one of a slew of stakes races at Penn National on Saturday afternoon slash evening, and you can bet them all with your new DRF Bets account. Just go to drf.com forward slash bet and get ready for that free cash in time for Belmont Stakes Week. Approximate post time for the grade two Penn Mile, 745 Eastern on Saturday night. Best of luck.